Hello guys, uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this cool thing. It's a graffiti uh, on a brick wall. Um, and let's get started. And one more thing. I know I haven't made a tutorial for like a real while now because I had school and a lot of tests before the end of the year, but finally, uh, I finished school. Now it's summer. It was the last day of school. Okay. And, um, and I got my report card. I, it was really good. I think I shouldn't be telling you this, but whatever. So let's get started. I'm going to be coming out with a lot of more tutorials over the summer. Okay. Uh, so, uh, first go into File, Open, and click on your brick wall. And I'm going to have this picture in the description, the link to it. And, yeah. And the very next thing you want to do is click on the uh, text tool and choose the font writers original I'm going to have the, the link in the description for both of the writers alert, original and bold and writers bold um either one you want to choose and uh, you won't write like GIMP everything um, because you will I I personally think that you should um that you should uh do it each letter so you could like change the size of it and, and everything. So first get, get it on G and change the size of it to like much more. That's a little too big though. Okay. I can move it up here. And now do the I and for the rest of the letters like that. Um, let's skip this part. And when, and when I'm all done putting with the letters, I could adjust I, I could adjust the size of it so the, like the I want to be smaller. In the 300 somewhere. Or that a little small. Yeah, that's about good. Um, and let's move it up and decide to make it much bigger. Switch it out. Up. And the P, of course. We need to move it up because we're going to be doing some cool stuff to it. And yeah, that looks about good. And now what we can start um, doing to make it look more graffiti like. So take your paths tool and zoom into about 200% and find the bottom of your peak. Um, and click about here and there, so it's like a diagonal line, and click right, like, a little, um, further below, not a lot, and this one, let's move it almost to that, and you could zoom out now. Um, and now we could curve it a little bit, 
Not a lot because it's gonna look awful. I'll try that. And now you could extend the thing like this. And I think you should uh make it like go like diagonally down um because it'll look cooler when we finish it off. And this diagonally up and let's kind of just like curve it up and this too. Uh, and now we could just take this and finish it off. Click Control to link the pen. And you could click Enter. And let's make a new layer. And take the paint, uh, the paint bucket tool. Make sure it's on black. And fill it in. Select none. Uh, Okay, and this looks about good. I you could make it even better. I'm just trying to hurry, uh, because yeah, whatever. So let's get on with the tutorial. And now what you want to do is make this all one layer. So let's turn off the the background layer and click Image, Merge Visible Layers, and click Merge. And yeah, you could change the name of it, blah blah blah. Uh, but that you could do on your own because I'm gonna get on the tutorial. Um, so the next thing you want to do is uh, alpha to selection this and um, and go to select grow and grow it by about 20 pixels. There and now what you want to do is put a gradient. So cl click on the gradient tool and let's make it like pink, like purple, pinkish, something like that. So let's go to the foreground color and let's make it something like that. Um, and let's make the background color much uh, darker. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Um, and stroke from the top while holding control to the bottom. Uh, but I forgot one thing. thing. Let's make a new layer, sorry about that. Uh, and move it below the text layer. There, that's what we need. Okay, now you could go, uh, you could, uh, select none. I did the shortcut, that's shift control A. Um and now it looks good already, but we need first of all the green, second of all to make it look 3D. And I know exactly how to do that. So uh let's go to script foo. Don't worry, I'm gonna have the link in the description how to download this. Um and click bevel and emboss. And change the highlight color to, let's make it kind of pinkish, a light pink. Mm. Uh, I know exactly what I want. You could copy me, I don't care, uh, because I already did this and... I wrote it down somewhere, so let me just write it down. It's F336. Okay. Click OK. And let's do the shadow color. Um, 5B. Three, four, five, E. Now, uh, click OK. Sorry, undo that. Um, let's undo that and um, let's do that again. Sorry, we forgot to do one thing. Uh. 
Let's change this up to seven. Sorry about that. I forget a lot of things that I'm doing. Tutorials because they get. I don't know why. It just happens a lot. Okay, that's good. And now you could see like a cool 3D thing. And if you look at the layers box, it it's really complicated. You could have done this uh, on your own, but this is just like easier. Um, and let's and right click, click on um, apply layer mask, and do that the same thing for this one. And now, uh, merge it down to one pink layer. There. And now we could start making the green. So, uh, for the selection, the G, or G layer, I should say. And go to select, grow, and grow by about five pixels. And uh, change the foreground color to well, it's called green. I think that's good. And and then to to the, a darker uh, version of it. And do the same thing. Stroke from the bottom up while or top to bottom while holding control. Uh, um, make a new layer. I think the control for this one. Make it below and okay. Selection. And now you could stroke the stroke down more for the control. There. And now select none. And now it looks good or even better, I should say. Now let's do the same thing. Um same like 3D looking thing for that thing. So script foo, layer effects, double and emboss. And let's change this to the highlight to 7FF. Seven FF uh F five C. Click OK or enter and the shadow color two oh two three six six two eight oh sorry two three six six two eight okay and now uh leave everything the same even the seven that we didn't do last time and click OK Again, look at that layer. And uh, uh, apply layer mask to both of them. And now merge these down again. Okay, fine. We did it. Um. And now um, we could merge down the pink and the green. And finally, now we could start making it look realistic. So the the first thing you want to do is after the selection of uh, the text layer and change the foreground color to a light uh, gray and the background color uh, to a dark gray um, or the opposite and now stroke from the bottom up while holding control uh, sorry let's do it the other way I don't really remember Um, 
supposed to be a little darker. Let's do it a little darker. Or lighter, I should say. And now, finally, to do it. Okay, now finally, like this, finally I got something right. Okay, um, now, I know we did it on the original one, and we did it on purpose, so select none, and you know why? Because we're going to bump map it, okay? So, first of all, let's bump map this, um, so... Now what you want to do is go to filters, uh, map, bump map, and change the bump map to brick wall, the brick wall, and do it three times. You really have to get like the, the depth. There. Probably. Now, what we want to do is, is to go to. Now it's like kind of grayish, and we do not want that. We want black, like it was. So click um. So click on colors, brightness, and contrast. And oh, let's change it way down. Like, um, we're doing it because. It wouldn't have appeared if um, if we just left it black. Uh, and also, it looks like cooler from like very dark to very light, like a little lighter. Um, so let's change it. You could copy me. Uh, you could do whatever you want, and then click colors, brightness, and contrast again. This is going to be a new brightness and contrast. And oh, let's put it at about sixty-five. I used sixty-five in the last one, and click OK. Now it looks like I said cooler. But we have to make the background also bump map, so click on the background, click filters, map, bump map, and do this two more times after this. Like we did in the last one. Okay, finally we're done with that. And now the last thing not, I should say uh, we should do is, or not last thing, because well, second to last I should say. Uh, the next thing uh, after this, we want to like uh, cut it to fit this, so we can move it up, and uh, you'll see what I mean by that. Uh, so alpha to uh, alpha, alpha to selection this. Click on the uh, bottom layer. Click edit, and now and now it's only the outline. So if you like move it up, nothing's gonna happen. If I turn this off, you'll see what I mean. It's just an outline. And now what we want to do is duplicate this, and on the top layer, go to filters, edge detect, neon, and oh. Let's put it up a lot, and then somewhere in the fifties. Um, let's do fifty-two, fifty-four, fifty-two, fifty-four, like that. Uh, 
Okay, the amount is zero, that's good. So click OK. And now it looks really stupid and you don't understand why we even did that. So let's change let's put this on overlay and uh sorry. Um darken only and change the uh, opacity of this layer like to 43.1 or something um and that looks much more realistic because like well you'll understand it when you see real graffiti text on a real wall um and the final last thing we want to do is add splatter so it looks more realistic again I don't know why I keep on saying that, but whatever. So click, uh, so for your foreground color, click the same, choose the same color that you use for uh, the darkened um, gradient for the for uh, gra background for the back. <laughs> I keep on saying background. Um, and let's uh, and I uh. Actually, I use this tutorial. I I'm just recreating it uh, from Gimp Know How. He inspired me. I I'm just copying off him because if you can't find him, uh, you could just and you're, you're subscribed to me. You could just like watch this tutorial and it's the same as his. Um, and he in the description has uh splatter brushes, but I can't access them, so I'm just gonna use the ones that are, are already in GIMP that come with it. So let's start uh, making splatter brushes. And change the size of it, because that's how it makes it look, because it's ju it it's just makes it like, if you don't, you're, it's just gonna, um, mess up the whole thing. Because you don't have really a lot. Sorry, you just have to do that on a new layer. Okay. Below everything except the background. Now we can do it. Ugh. Good. Use this one. Make it bigger and do it here. Um. Choose the other one. Change it small and get some in between because it just looks cool like that. And, like cut it off at some point here and some more there's one here yeah. oh, that's too big I think we need like one more, two smaller, and we smaller and put it here. Okay, I think that looks about good, and now we have to bump that, bump that them also. Um, so filters, now bump map, and do it three times. Okay, and that is about good, and I think we're done, so yeah.
Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe, whatever you want to do. But but if you want, like this video, if you didn't, don't do that stuff. But please comment. I like to have comments, even though if you want to do them bad, I don't care. I just want comments. So whatever. So I'm Mr. Astronaut Man, and thanks for watching.